J Drone here. This is the Falcon from Skyriders, and this is a second look at it. The first look I had it out is pretty windy, kind of snowy. Um, I was flying in the trees and whatnot. So we're gonna get this in the wide open and give it another review. That was the first view review out of the box where I kind of killed the camera, and it does seem like the camera is working here. You can see the blue light, and then it turned red when I hit it. But unfortunately, after me killing the camera slightly, it did affect the camera, and it the video quality that I got back was basically frame skipping, so it wasn't a continuous video. It was like tons of stills all in a row, which uh, makes it basically useless for me unless I was going to pull stills off of it, but uh, we're not even going to play with that. I'm probably going to end up putting the SEMA X5C's camera on this, just because one, that's an excellent camera. Two from what I've seen from people with this drone and from what I can see on the recorded footage is uh, it's jello free the quad doesn't have a lot of vibration to it it's a extremely nice flyer not in wind why am I saying it's a nice flyer but not in wind well because you have quadcopters that aren't a hundred percent traverse in every area of flight this unfortunately does not do well in I'm going to say moderate wind. Uh, five mile an hour and up, you're going to have a hard time. It has two pitch levels, two speed levels, beginner and advanced level, whatever you want to call them, it has two of them. And that is not enough to fight anything over five mile an hour. It's going to get pushed around. It's going to get bullied. The range on this is decent. Um, it's definitely not epic, but it's decent. It's good enough. I mean, you can see how far I'm taking it out and you can see how far I'm taking it up and that that's that's far enough I mean this came out of I believe the Dollar General retailed for about 50 I picked it up for 30 around like Black Friday time and it does have massive prop guards on it I'm catching this because I didn't know my camera wasn't working properly so I was resetting the camera as I do to save stuff kinda like what you would do on a computer when you're typing something you would save it periodically in case the computer shut down that way uh, you didn't lose your work so that's why I do when I'm recording on these toy grades I'll bring it back turn it off turn it back on that's kinda like me saving my work but unfortunately me saving my work on this uh, didn't prevail to anything because again I killed the camera the first time I took this out in snow when I sat it down on top of snow which I've never really had that issue before with a vented camera because I've sat the striker on top of snow and it has a vented camera almost the identical camera minus the fact that it's white and this one's red um, but I don't know I guess this has a touchy camera as far as durability goes so the camera's gone we'll put the X5C's on it next time and show you the jello free flight out of this and there you go. You, you can see I have it up there. Um, so it's getting decent range. I'd say a little bit above average range for a uh, toy grade, especially something out of the Dollar General. Not to say everything in the Dollar General is garbage, but as far as getting an epic, epic drone out of the Dollar General, you don't see that too often. And I'd say this is right below epic, epic. And right in the middle of the screen is where the drone is. It's very tough to see. I apologize for that. It's out there. And actually, we just dropped throttle. Um, that was the max. So if you put this in full screen and you can judge my steps going to this, that was the max. Generally, I don't like to do the max. Generally, I try to stay away from that because I do have an abyss right in front of me. And I don't like losing things. But this, is, this thing's bright red there's no shrubs out here that are bright red so I should be able to find it easily without any issues and again if you lose your drone keep the transmitter on walk straight walk straight to your last point of view and I'm walking straight into this brush because that's where I thought I saw it that's where I thought I saw it drop hopefully it didn't go any further hopefully it didn't go in the abyss and I'm unable to find it here so I'm gonna throttle up let's see here Bam! Right over there. That's all you gotta do to find it. Get close to it, throttle up, you'll hear the motors, and you can find it. This will also give you a good idea of what type of flight time you should be able to get. Besides the fact that if you're down south, you might get a little bit better flight time. And there you go. The camera looks like it's working, but it's really not working well, as I explained. But uh, I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm in northeast Pennsylvania, and it's brutal cold out here. Um, we're in the 20s. 
with a little bit of wind, not much, I think it's like a two to three mile an hour wind where this is able to cope and not get pushed around too much. Again, five mile an hour, that's probably about the cut on this, but LiPo batteries do freeze. LiPo batteries are affected slightly by the cold. Obviously, they're not affected drastically because I've done sub-zero uh, flights, I've done teen flights, I've done single digit flights, and I got decent flight time. But I guarantee if it wasn't that low, my flight time would have been extended just a little bit. So if you're down south, whatever the end result on this, you could probably add a half minute, minute, two minutes tops, depending on your flight style, depending if you're flying aggressively, depending on what speed rate setting you are flying in, because all those are factors into the end time of your flight time. If you are going to be flying this predominantly outside, I suggest taking the prop guards off. Um, if you're going to be flying it outside in a wide open area like this, you could probably keep them on, but they're only going to be added weight and they're kind of useless because you're in a wide open area. I just haven't taken them off myself. Today I deemed drone day where I flew I think like seven different drones today because I had a day off, so I was in and out of the house constantly. Um, but if you're flying indoors, keep them on. Um, if you're flying around trees outdoors, I'm going to recommend you definitely take them off. Otherwise, you're going to get hung up in a tree and you're probably going to have to climb a tree or get grab a drone stick if you are fortunate enough to have one like J-Drone does. Um, or a lot of people just leave the drones up in the trees. I don't see how you could do that, but people do. And they wish, hope, and pray it falls down. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes uh, it gets stuck up there. Sometimes a neighbor or a kid walking by sees it and they go up and get it despite the fact not having a transmitter for it. Then you come out the next day and BAM! It's gone. <laughs> so, uh, those propeller guards around trees, no good. Right now, guys, we are pushing seven minutes in like 23 degree weather here. My hands are hurting. Um, I do have gloves in my pocket, but I don't have them on my hands. Go figure that. <laughs> um, hopefully this ends soon. That way I can kind of go take a trip home, which it is a hike. I didn't drive out here. I hiked out here um, and warm up my hands and get the next drone ready. And again, that's about the range there. Any higher, it starts to get sticky. What do I mean by sticky? Well, you're throttling left, it's holding left. You're throttling forward, it's holding forward. That's uh, sticky pitching. When you start getting sticky pitching up high in altitude or far out on a lateral plane, that's just about your limit as far as your range goes. It's a really cool flyer. It looks really nice. Um, this battery is just about done. I'm Jay Drone. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And check out Drone Days on Facebook. You can join that and chit-chat. Have a wonderful day, guys, and take care.